Hello, my name is Stefan Schreiner and I'm System Engineer at Rosenberger's Research and Development Division. Today I want to talk about a novel method for measuring RF currents and voltages. In the RF domain, we are typically measuring signal powers or scattering parameters instead of voltages and currents. However, in case of fast transient and impulse signals or nonlinear devices, an evaluation of currents and voltages in the time domain might be a huge advantage. In this short video, I would like to present a novel measurement method by time domain procedures merging together with vector network analyzers calibration principles, allowing to probe voltages and currents in the time domain by the use of conventional scopes and directional couplers. Let's have a look to the functional principle of this novel measurement method. Taking a look to a one port vector network analyzer measurement. The sketch of the measurement shows at least one systematical error based on the unknown cable which has to be taken into account and so-called error terms can be formulated. Calibrating the VNA is done by replacing the DOT by the well-known standards open, short and match and measuring the results. Based on these results, the error terms can be determined and used to get rid of the systematic errors due to a post-processing. By inserting a directional coupler and connecting additional cables, the system can be treated as 4-port. Due to this, the error model is enhanced by the additional ports. This 4-port can be divided into two independent 2-ports by the means of the 4-port 2-port reduction, generating two sets of error terms E and I. By collecting the scattering parameters of an open, short and match, and by processing this data using our calibration algorithm, which includes a patented approach to calculate the 0, 1 and 1, 0 error terms separately required for large signal models, the complex error terms can be determined and stored in a calibration file. If we now change our setup to measure a system in time domain, we have to replace the VNA by a scope and feed the scope with the calibration data. A typical time domain measurement task also includes a signal source and a load. The signal generator producing a signal propagating through the coupler into the load where some part of the signal is reflected. A small part of both signals are separately fed into the scope. This raw data is used together with our post-processing algorithms and the calibration file to determine the voltage and the current in the calibration plane. Let's prove this principle by a measurement. On the desk we have a verification setup containing our signal source, a directional coupler, for which we have already collected the calibration data, and of course a scope. One note. Originally our algorithms are designed to post-process captured data by the use of a PC. But now, for demonstration purposes, we managed to port the algorithms for a direct use on a LeCroy scope. For a simple verification, the measurement ports of the directional coupler are connected to channel 1 and 2 of the scope. The mainline output of the directional coupler is connected to channel 3 for comparison. The signal generator produces a 5 MHz rectangular waveform with one volt peak peak and is connected to the input of the directional coupler. The scope shows the rectangular waveform at the direct connected port. On the two monitor ports we currently see the raw data which isn't rectangular at all due to the non-flat coupling attenuation of the directional coupler. However, if the raw data and the calibration error terms are put together within our post-processing algorithms, the voltage signal can be reconstructed. Let's put the voltage signal in the same window as the direct signal. In direct comparison, we see an amazing accuracy in amplitude as well as in the shape of the signal. Especially if we think on the raw data signal which seems to be completely different. Now we have proven the voltage signal, let's prove also the current signal. Therefore, we have to switch on the current algorithm. Currently, we have connected the mainline output of the coupler to the 50 ohm scope input. The current signal shows a rectangular waveform with an amplitude of 20 mA peak peak, which is in accordance to the 1 volt peak peak at the 50 ohm scope input. By disconnecting the direct channel, we got an open in the calibration plane. Due to this, the voltage is doubled and the current gets zero. If we now plug in a short, the voltage in the calibration plane becomes zero and the current increases. If we plug in a load with about 10 ohm, 
we see that the current amplitude becomes 35 milliamperes peak peak while the voltage becomes about 360 millivolts peak peak. Even if the shown examples are very simple, they clarify that by the use of the Rosenberger calibrated time domain method, shortly called RCTD, it is possible to measure RF voltages and currents in the time domain. The applied directional coupler is especially designed for EMC measurement in automotive high voltage power cables. But let me clearly state that the measurement methodology is not limited to our special directional coupler. The mathematical algorithms can be also used for other off-the-shelf couplers. Due to this, a mainly free of reaction tapping of voltages and currents in fully operating systems is possible. The calibration procedure doesn't require a through calibration standard, which makes it easy to use a 50 ohm VNA with a directional coupler matching the impedance of the system to be measured. Measurements of RF voltages and currents, especially measurements of high-speed transient pulses, is a general task. Due to this, our RCTD algorithms have some benefit in a wide range of measurement applications, including characterization of nonlinear devices, amplifiers, surge protection devices, automotive EMC measurements, and so on. If you want to have additional information, don't hesitate to contact Rosenberger. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.